joining us online. I trust that you are well and God has, has really refreshed you uh, this morning. We had fun. We were dancing. We were crying. You know, someone doesn't know would think we're schizophrenic because one minute we are dancing and the next moment we are crying. But because we are just full of the joy of the Lord, it is our strength. Amen. 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 My name is Koketo. For those that do not know me, uh, my wife is Tato. She's not here. She is at work. And uh, together we get the privilege of, of stewarding this work. Uh, and God has blessed us with this. Tomorrow, what date is tomorrow? What date is tomorrow? Hey, you know, hey, yeah. it's the 31st. So on Tuesday, on the 1st, we'll be celebrating our second anniversary as a church. It will be... It would be, it would be, uh, it would be a second year since we have been together as a church, and God has been wonderful. God has been great, and we are we are grateful. Amen. Uh, so next week Sunday, we are having um, a celebration. We're having a party, right? We're having a party, and if you would like to bring scones, if you would like to bring uh, cupcakes, if you would like to bring something, Zetu is at the back. Zetu, just stand up. There's Z today with an Africa thing. Uh, uh, yeah, with an Africa t-shirt. Z2, come. Let people see you. There might be a single guy here looking for you. Yeah, so there's Z2. If you'd like to, if you'd like to bring a cake or something next week, just talk to Z2 and then we'll organize that and make sure that we come and enjoy and we come and enjoy the, the, the party together. Amen. Uh, invite a friend to come and celebrate to come and celebrate with us. Um, as a church, uh, we have been in a series for the past couple of weeks uh, titled Being Family. Have you enjoyed the series? It's been a great series, right? So if you have not watched the series, please jo go online. All the sermons and the services are still there, both on YouTube and on, uh, uh, on Facebook, and uh, just catch up on what, what has been happening there. And we have been it's, been, it's been a good time. But... <clears throat> We thought, you know, I've been preaching, 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 but there are people who are living out these principles, and we would like to hear from them, just to hear, you know, what, 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 what inspires them? What do they think? Because sometimes, as we are preaching, they're like, no, you are a pastor, you are supposed to say that, right? Let's hear from someone else who is not a pastor, and hear, and hear from them. So today we have amazing people who are going to come. And just share, share with us. If you can move this for me once, yeah, I'd, I'd really be grateful. Um, if you can just put it here. All right. So, all right. So, if you can help me, uh, welcome on stage, uh, Siam Tanda Zungu. Hey brother, I'm good man. Grab a seat at the at the end there, and then um, yeah, I like your I like your shirt. Yeah, it's nice. I'm not sure about the chest. Uh, but the Lord loves you. He, he cares about you. He cares about you. <laughs> um, and uh, and then we have my Matilda Foley. All the way from Ghana. Hi, Matilda. All the way from Ghana, guys. We are international. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we have Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Magua. Uh, if we can welcome them. Uh, Mr. Magua is sitting at the back and uh, they are coming. Uh, yes, awesome, awesome, wonderful. And welcome, wonderful. And, uh, and, uh, and welcome. So, and then you have me as your host, Oprah Winfrey, for the day. <laughs> All right, can I, can I, you say you want to switch the mic, the, the, the batteries? You, is it fine? So, can we rotate? And then I use this one. There you go. All right. Thank you guys so much for, for, for doing this. 
most of them are introverts. Well, with the exception of, of, no, there's no way. No, you are not. Yeah, there's no way you are an introvert. Most of them are introverted, and uh, I challenge them to come and sit here. For some, it was a challenge. For some, it was not. <laughs> but uh, but we are here nonetheless, and I think they represent the diversity that we have in the church. Uh, right? We have we have people that are younger. We have people that are older. We have people that are smart and beautiful, and then you have me. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you guys so much for agreeing to do this. And uh, and so I just want to have a chat with them quickly. Just to talk about what has been happening in the past couple of weeks, what we've been talking about in the past couple of couple of weeks, right? Um, the the first question, maybe to you, Sia, uh, is: um, uh, Are you are you sorted, Kibo? Oh, the battery is not gonna last. All right, maybe maybe let's start with Sia. Uh, what impact has serving in the church had in your life? And uh, it could be, yeah, take that, use the, the, cord, the corded one. It could be positive or negative. We're not going to assume that serving in the church only has positive, Im, a positive impact. So what, what impact has serving in the church had in your, in your life? He is my wife. Allows me to grow in my faith and in my relationship with God. And that's what I think that gift that you have is what you have. Yeah. yeah. And ever since I started serving in the church, I felt that it was my responsibility to serve in the church. And since then, I have been helping out in some capacity from time to time. And more, some of them were bad, but that didn't stop me. Because I knew that the more I serve, Regardless of the situation I'm going through currently, I know that it's the Lord with me and it's actually supplying me with that. Like, and it comes back to scripture as saying that if you build my church, I will build the gates of hell. Right? So meaning, not only by does it refer as grace, And it changed my life in a, in a very, very dramatic, in a huge way, I can say. So. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank Let's you. give it up for Sia. Um, thank you. So, so there's, there's, 
thank you, man. And we appreciate every effort and just your serving and your servant with heart. It's really been a blessing. Every time you are, you, are, you are a runner, every time there's something that is needed here, you run and get things done. So we appreciate that. Matilda, we're living in a generation right now that, you know, the, the, because there's serving and then there's, the, we need to have a church to come and serve at, to start with. We need, we need stuff. There's money involved when we're talking about church. And we're living in a generation where people are not sure whether, you know, they should still give or not. Oftentimes, you hear people saying, uh, you know, pastors must go and work, you know, because there's no one who's going to live for free of us, you know. So my question to you is that, what's your take, what's your take on that? What's your take? Yeah. Following my partner here, I'd like to greet everybody, Muruti and Mamuruti and Jackson. Um, there's no Mamuruti. <laughs> keep, people, keep pointing here. Not, she's not here. That's <laughs> fine. subject because uh, I'm also a PK. Um, <clears throat> I'll break it down in two sides, right? There's the practical aspect of, say, Muruti, I'd like to use as an example. If you were someone, probably if you were in corporate, you'd be senior or middle management to senior level, right? So meaning you're forever in meetings. Then if I had a child and I needed, let's say my child got sick or something, I don't know why, but natural inclination is for Murugi as opposed to going to the hospital. And now, if I'm calling you, your phone is on silent, you're in a meeting, and maybe my child's situation gets from bad to worse, who am I going to blame? You, of course, because I called you in my past, you're not available. Now, as the church, if we allow, not to say we shouldn't allow you to work or whatever, but if our stance is that our pastors should work, we're basically limiting our access to him. Not to say that you are on speed dial, but I mean, it's always great to have your spiritual guide, your spiritual leader easily available when you need them. Um, in the past few weeks, we've been going through a lot as a church, um, and by God's grace, Muruti has been available to visit people at hospitals and whatever during the week while the rest of us are working. But if he was actually working, who would go? I mean, would you take leave? I don't know how many leave days we get. Some people are fortunate to get 25 days, others 30 if you're lucky. But how many of us are here? And if one person gets sick a day, probably would finish three, six months. After, three, after one month, there's no leave left. Who's going to go visit these people? Who's going to, you know, the physical or practical aspect of pastoring takes time. Um, if we talk about the financial aspect, you've got a family to leave home and go and see people, you need petrol. You need all these things practically to get you to attend or to shepherd the flock. Now, as a pastor, yes, one would say, you know, have investments to get the money in. That's great. But then that moves your attention from taking care of us to focusing on the financials. <clears throat> so I think what I'm trying to say is there are some pastors who would rather work or rather be part-time pastors and, and part-time in corporate or wherever, if it works for them. But my stance, or what I believe, according to what scripture is, uh, stay, bleh, sorry, scripture encourages, sorry, is for pastors to actually not work and to take care of the flock. Um, in, in biblical times, when the children of Israel were building, the pastors were, not the pastors, back then they were called Levites or, or priests. They were not involved in the building. Theirs was to, to daily be engaged in sacrificing to God to make sure that the saints are in good standing with God because we can offend God in different ways. So if we take your attention from doing what you're supposed to be doing, which is to pray for us and to take care of us and we move your attention to fending for your family, we're screwed. Sorry, I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> so in church we have different people. Sorry. And, uh... <laughs> Do you, eh? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'll keep praying for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you see, like a like a screwdriver. Yes. So that's saying comes from, you know, you just yeah. So it's fun. Yeah, yeah. So just yeah. yeah. So just, yeah. <laughs> All right. So when we were, uh, thank you so much, Matilda, for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So when we were when we were moving Tatemago, when we were moving here, right? So Tatemago and Osimbumi have been part of our church since the beginning, and uh, so so they are in business, and so their schedule is quite hectic. They travel quite a bit, and so when we were moving for those weeks, uh, Braste or Tatemago, you were not around, right? So you were traveling, so you didn't get an opportunity to be part of the the move. And when you came, you said there is no way you can just be part of the church and not do something. And so you organized with Kutle to come here and come with your toolbox and come and do something physically. That's despite the fact that you actually gave financially towards the, towards the move, but you still felt that it was important that you do something with your hands practically. And I, and I want to ask, what informs that kind of mindset? What was, what was compelling you to say, man, I need to do something with my hands? Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's not me. It's, I, I don't know who arranged this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you doubted that we can jump onto this. <laughs> it's for your safety. It's for your safety. Yeah. Oh, you're looking at the color of your Yeah, head. I'm like, yeah, Madala might not make it up there. But, but nevertheless, uh, to answer your question is, uh, I always spot beautiful things. Yeah. Uh, Good things. Yeah. And I go for them. Yeah. I'm married to a Zulu woman. Yes, uh-huh. And I'm a person. Uh-huh. <laughs> The reason I did that, I saw a beautiful woman first. And I went for it. I didn't know whether it's a Zulu or a what. I just went for it. And what happened, I have to call everybody to come and to pay the Lobola fee. Now, the Zulus were very brutal when it comes to that. (laughs) I paid a reasonable amount of Lobola (laughs) for those who are young. Now, the reason why I did that is because when you see a good opportunity, you must never miss it. So when we, when, when the church moved, I didn't have an opportunity because I was not there. But as soon as I came back, the church was already here. And I saw a couple of things that still needs to be fixed. And I realized that I can do something. And for me, it was an opportunity. Otherwise, the reason why I was, I was introducing the fact that I'm a Tosa and my wife is a Zulu, I wanted you to know that. I always spot the opportunity and I invest. So paying that amount of Lobola was my investment. Look at me now. if I miss that opportunity that I was given and I thought maybe a good thing is still going to come along and let that one go. Now whenever you get that kind of an opportunity be it in church out there in the open do not miss an opportunity to do something good because an investment is not only coming in form of money. If you look at the church and you think you've got a little bit of time by just investing that little bit of time that you've got to the church, you're expecting a return. In everything that you put your time into, yeah. you must be willing to compromise something. Be it time, be it yourself. If you've got an equipment, your equipment. If you've got money to buy petrol, pay for petrol for somebody to get there. If you can't get there, show up and say, I will sponsor somebody to get there. You know, do something. When you're given an opportunity to invest into something, do it. It will give you good returns in the future. Of course, when you invest, you invest today. And you don't get returns the same day. You need to allow it some time. And after some time, then you'll see your returns. That's why I came from the Singapore. But the person who is going to do a short time. And I had time in my hands. I had the tools. And I know how to work it. So I did come and show up. Thank you, sir.
And I, I think what, what, I think that's such a different mindset when someone sees serving a church as an investment, yeah. you know, as, as not the church is taking away from them, but they're seeing it as something that is an investment. So, so it's, thank you so much, sir. That is, that is, that's a good, a good way of looking at it. So, uh, now to your Zulu wife. Uh, 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 so, like I said, you guys are quite busy. And uh, uh, um, you, you are in business, you employ a considerable amount of people. Uh, so it is busy. So as a church, recently then we started small groups, right? Where we encourage people to belong in small groups. And I want to know how, how has it been for you guys as a family? Now the church asking you to now join a small group with your busy schedule. I mean, you are a mother uh, uh, of three, and then you are a wife, and then you are also... Uh, 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 a leader, a business owner. How has now trying to fit into small groups impacted you, either positive or negatively? Um, San Juan Bazarani again. I had to skin being a Zulu. Um, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity, Mfundis. Um, you know, it can be very hectic. But um, the small groups has really impacted us in a positive way because I think we are as busy as we believe we are. And we, if we, we were to put our schedule, it's up to us whether we are busy or not. It's how you manage yourself, self-discipline, and managing your schedule and what's important to you. Because what we've learned is that if something is important to you, you will make time for it. Uh, yeah. But if something is of no value to you, you will be busy for that. And we see that in our daily life. There's certain things we can push back and say, this is not an emergency. It can yeah. wait. There's certain things that you know if it's adding value to your life. So that is what the small groups are doing for us currently. Because we get to interact at personal level. And how the small groups have been structured, I must commend um, the person behind the, the vision of the small groups. And because it's, it's actually when, when you heard, we were like, yo, uh, I think our, our small group leader <laughs> will attest to this. We're the first ones to say, we're not going to make it. Yeah. It's not going to be possible for us to again be available on Tuesday. And um, we get home quite late. Um, so it's like six o'clock after six, we just entered the door. And as Mfunisi has said, I'm a mom, you let to make sure the family must eat, the kids have come back from school, is everybody okay? But what's important is that we've learned to manage ourselves. We've learned to have ways and means around our, sh our schedule. Mm. So coming back to the small group. So um, I think week one, we were already there when we, intro when, when we started our group. We were both there, my husband and I, and it was amazing. And we were like, wow, we were playing um, ice-breaking games, getting to know one another with the other couples. And it was just an amazing space. So, and then following up to that, even the discussions that we are having, um, it's discussions that you're not going to be able to have at church. Yes. It's discussions that you're not going to be able to have at two for two. Um. Like I said, it's really... Um, personal and intimate, yeah. if I can put it that way. And it's a space where you can be yourself and really be yourself and be able to communicate with people of the same mind. Yeah. Okay, so because on a Sunday like this, Mfundisi has to do things to cover all of us. Ne? And to, you might not hear the things the way you could. And you, when you go at home, it's like, oh, okay, how does that fit into my own personal life? The small group is going to break that down for you to that level. And it's okay not to understand anything. You're not getting judged. That's one thing. And it's just you being you and trying to find what God has in store for you. Yeah. So that is what the small groups, they oh. really um powerful. They really um encouraging if you want tools to get on with your journey join a small group it is not time wasted and the way it's structured i think that's why i, I, I really say the person that came up with this vision um it is amazing because we're not mixed it's people of on it might not be to the t but you, you it's people that you can you, you can identify with the conversations you 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 get to understand each other at a certain level amen Thank you so much, Osimbu, for that. Um, 
and, 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 and I think the, the reason why I chose you is because, you know, we, it can, we can easily say, no, I'm too busy. You know, I can't be in a small group, my schedule, and so on and so on and so on. So I wanted someone who's actually, who's actually busy. I mean, you look after about 80 employees, right? So that's hectic. And to be able then still to prioritize that hour and find it to be life-giving, uh, it's quite encouraging. You know, sometimes it makes me look, I'm like, yo, I have two employees and already I think I'm too busy for, for these things. Uh, and uh, yeah, and my, by, by two employees, I mean I'm the employer. And then there's me, myself, and I, the other two, uh, uh, you know, um, so, yeah. Uh, so, Braste, your, your son, Ole, too, is at the back there. Uh, he's, walking, <laughs> he's walking away. <laughs> uh, so he started serving here. He didn't know much, and uh, he didn't know how to zoom a camera. And, uh, and today he's leading our, 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 media, our media desk. He is, uh, he's, 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 in the past two years, he's grown to a point where he's needing that. Uh, uh, I want to ask from you, as a father, what does that say to you? You know, how does that, how, how, how does that make you feel as dad, just seeing your son growing in the church and serving in that, in that, in that way? That's a serious one, eh? <laughs> because he's got a feeling of his own. Yeah. That's why he's walking away. Yeah, yeah. But nevertheless, the kids of today, they've got lots of challenges as they grow up. Now, if you are a parent to any kid, you want your kid to grow up in such a way that it will please you in the future. Now, they've got lots of options. I mean, when we grew up, we didn't have options. Going yeah. to school, it was a must. Yeah, yeah. Or if you don't go to school, there's going to be a whole lot of beating that you might have. There was beating when I was at school. Yeah. If you don't answer the right question, you were beaten for that. <laughs> Essentially, it, it was, it's been healthy for our son in terms yeah. of growing up. Yeah. But today, the kids, they've got all the rights. And parents are confused sometimes as to how to actually handle our kids because we don't have those privileges that our fathers had. That's simple for me. I would never say to my father, you stop if, if, if my father is saying something and saying, but that's nonsense. Sure. Yeah. That kind of a thing. Yeah. That was going to be a serious matter. Yeah. Now the reason, because there's democracy in the world, kids, they've got rights. You cannot touch your kids. Yeah. If you touch them, they, there's police coming to your house. You get arrested, those kind of things. The best thing that you can ever do yeah. is to pray for your kids to do good. Yeah. And when they do that, whilst you're still alive, you feel good about it. So as a father, and to have a son that serves in church, yeah. it means he's actually safeguarded from all the other things that are yeah. available out there in the open. Because yeah. the problem with the kids of today, they've got a whole lot of time, yeah. but they don't know that. And with the time they have, unfortunately, they are unable to invest it in good things. Yeah. That's why there's, the streets are full. Yeah. There's street kids, there's homelessness, there's a whole lot of things. There's addiction, there's uh, teenage pregnancy. There's a whole lot of conditions that we get today yeah. with our kids. So it becomes, it's like a cherry on top to have your kid going to church. Yeah. Now serving in the church yeah. and growing in the church, yeah. it means your kid is guarded, is safeguarded. Yeah. You know? yeah. So that's how I feel right now being a father. Yeah. And in actual fact, in church we should actually be grateful for the same mind that we have in church. But we thank God as well for the insanity that we see in the world because we can compare. We know what is right and what is wrong because we're given an opportunity to exercise the mind. Now, unfortunately, other people, they're not given a choice. They see themselves out there not doing good. So we thank God for that. It's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Magua. And I mean, Sia, uh, serving in church, I mean, like uh, uh, Braste is saying, it's amazing and it's an amazing experience. However, sometimes it can take too much of your time. You know, you can end up now being so bogged down in church that you don't get an opportunity to do other things. 
So how are you, you know, striking the balance and making sure that you are serving here at church while you are still also prioritizing your studies, your job, and all the other things that you need to, you need to do? Uh, yo, okay. This is getting tense. But anyway, um, okay. The way I go about it, um, as a young person growing up and stuff, I am a very, very focused person. As you've said, I am also about to run a job as well in KZN. I'm going to have my own office as well. You know, so I'm literally just a focused person. But all in all, when it comes to serving, I feel like majority of times when it comes to serving, it's more of not scheduling, but more of mental health. Right, because when it's when you come for your mental health, then a lot of things will be structured properly. Because everything, basically, if you look at it, it's more or less kind of psychological, right? Your emotions are connected to your 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 mindset. Your whatever your plans are doing is connected to your mindset. So even if you're serving, it's also connected to your mindset. So now, for me, is saying. Okay, I study, I go to uh, Stock Market College. Well, God bless me with the school that was online yeah. currently. So that has given me more time to actually say, okay, now I'm more available for Muso, right? Because I know that the more I do things for God, is the more I see myself actually go much more further in life. Yeah. And actually getting pulled in the things of the world, which is going to a party whatsoever, you know. But I'm not saying that's wrong. And I'm also not saying that's right. Don't, don't, please don't take my word for that. <laughs> you know, but that also teaches you how to be disciplined. You know, so for me, it's all about discipline, psychological things, and all of that has to go as with my peace. Am I peaceful with me going here? Yeah. If my structure is so, uh, or my schedule is so uh, overcrowded, I need to find a safe space. So for me, a safe space for me is serving. Yeah. So when I'm here, I'm basically at a safe space. And I like to be peaceful. So this is where I can literally, you can see me, you can see me sitting down somewhere. I'll be thinking yeah. at that moment, like tomorrow I'll be doing planning my life. That moment, I'm peaceful. I'm, I can make any type of decisions. And knowing very well I'm at church, I'm doing something for God, I know he's here with me right now. So if I'm making a bad decision, I'm able right at that spot to ask, am I making the right or wrong decision? Good, so it's almost the same thing when it comes to uh, in life in general as well. So I, I, I yeah, I just do the very same thing. You know? Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. I like the way you use discipline. It's about disciplining yourself, making sure that you are disciplined. And talking about discipline, Matilda, you were talking about pastors, and that was a bit of an awkward thing because now you're, you keep referring to me. Uh, uh, but we're talking about discipline. And someone is sitting here and says, man, economic times are tough. You know, uh, I, I have to be disciplined with my finances. And in that discipline and that, that good financial stewardship, church does not fit, fit there. I want to save as much as I can. So in order to secure my future, I'm not going to give. You know, that 10% that I'm giving to church, I could be investing in stock market, saving the money, or buying another property, whatever the case may be. And, and that is, is seen as a good thing. And what do you say then to someone who is in that, who's, who, who, that is their mindset they have? Uh, that's a tough question. Okay, so... A tough, am I asking tough questions? <laughs> Not straightforward, but yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to start off by saying where your treasure, where your money is, your heart is as well, right? Where your treasure is, your heart is. Now, I'm going to digress a little bit. Have you guys ever noticed when a guy likes a girl, he will do anything to get her attention. If he doesn't have money... He will propose taking a walk. Just let's take a walk, just to spend time with her. No, no, no. He will borrow the money. 
Yeah. <laughs> he will not walk. Yeah. He will the money somewhere. <laughs> okay, well, I'm talking about people who don't like debt, but okay. Yeah, where, yeah. I'm, where I'm going with this is yeah, when it comes to the things of God, our mindset, we should also have the I'll do anything to get into his presence, or I'll do any, when you go and see a king, you don't go empty-handed. Um, uh, Zuelitini, well, when he was still alive, when you'd get the opportunity to go to him, you take cows, you take, you, you, you prepare before you go to the king. And when it comes to giving, as Christians, our mindset needs to change and forget about the fact that we're giving money to the church. We need to acknowledge that God is the one who gives us the money. God is the one who takes care of us. So on your salary alone, you would not survive. I like practicalities. Let's say you earn 20,000. I don't know how much tax on that would be. Let's say 5K for argument's sake. You've got 15, no, 5K. Fam, my math is not that great. Just but 3,000. Really. Thanks, 3, 000, thank you. 3,000, all right? Then you've got medical aid. That's another 1.5 coming off. You've got how much? Four, 15, 16,000 left? 14,000? Guys, please help me with maths. Can I just get a maths person who's going to do the subtractions for me? But anyway, so you've paid your tax, you've paid your medical aid, right? If you have a company that also does a pension fund or whatever, that gets deducted. Great. Then you have to pay rent. If you stay in a two-bedroom, maybe you're paying 7,000, 7 7.5. Maybe you're maybe you're left with 8,000, give or take. You have a car, petrol has gone up, you pay about 3,000 rand for petrol for the month. Brings you down, okay, well, 6,000 girl, what do you drive? <laughs> but anyway, let's say, okay, now you're left with 6,000. You still need to buy food. If you're a family of four, 4,000 is not gonna be enough for food. So now you're left with 1,000 rand, okay? And then the child gets sick. You need to go to the doctor. Your medical aid savings is, ex is ex like it's finished. What are you going to do? You're going to use that thousand rand, go to the doctor. Now you're in negatives. Now you're borrowing. Now the Bible says in Malachi that if you bring your tithe into the storehouse, he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. A devourer is anything that takes away from what God has given you. So, so <laughs> where I'm going with this is when you get money, my younger brother always says, your money, the money that you have is not yours. It's God who has borrowed it to you. So you need to give him his share first. So you'd say, if it's the 10%, you say, okay, God, I earned 20,000, here's 2,000. What do you want me to do with it? Scripture says we should bring it into the, into the storehouse, being the church. You take it to God and speak over your offering. Speak over your tithe to say, God, your word says you'll rebuke the devourer for my sake. Here's my 10%. According to your word, in obedience to your word, I'm giving it. Do your end. Rebuke the devourer. I promise you. Guys, I'm not promising you. Test God. The scripture says test him and see. So that month, especially when the month is tough, more, guys, try it. Just try it. Take that 10%. Give it in and say, okay, God, this month I'm trusting you. Rebuke that devourer. I don't want to. And that month you will not have unnecessary expenses. You'll probably have money left over that you didn't know was possible. I've tried it before. In June, I traveled, when was it? I, I, I decided on Thursday that on Friday I'm going, I went on an international trip for two, two weeks. I had not saved. I was just like, God, I've been paying tithe. I'm going. I don't know how. Money came. I had money to go. I had pocket money. I had money when I came back. Guys, I did not borrow. I had everything I needed. Why? Because I've told myself that God provides. My salary is a means through which I get money. So it means if, even if I get retrenched, God forbid, I will still be taken care of because God provides for me. So if you tell yourself that your money provides for you, I feel sorry for you because we just did a quick analogy on a 20,000 rand salary. There are people who earn 5,000 rand a month. How do they make it? So we need to acknowledge that whether I'm earning 5,000 or 50 million, people still are in debt. They are millionaires who are in debt because they cannot, for the life of them, things are just not coming together. But we have, a sure, we have surety in the word of God when we take that 10% of money is a lot, but it's not a lot compared to the amount we spend on chocolates and unnecessary things. 
I can challenge you, maybe this week alone, when you, when you go shopping, keep all your receipts and look at what you're buying. And you will notice that, I did that once, I spent like 3,000 Rand on takeout. But unconsciously, because when you're coming from work, ah, I'm tired, take away, ah, I'm tired. Before you realize 3K, 5K, and you're just like, where's all the money going? But if you give unto God, I don't know how it happens. There's always more than enough. That's just my challenge to you. So um, all I'm going to say, sorry, back to your question, is for us to change our mindset to acknowledge God as our source and then from there ask him to guide our spending. Um, and if, you, if, if you're the kind of person who really are living paycheck to paycheck or you're just like, I don't know where my next loaf of bread is, and I don't mean to speak Christianese here. I mean it literally. Trust God. You'll be invited to dinners you didn't even know existed. You will find places. People who you didn't even talk to will start remembering you. Like, I don't want to say miracle money will find your account, but those things happen. God is really, really, really faithful. So, yeah. Someone just said, I receive it here. He just said he's witnessed that. He's had it in his life. So I, I always say when I talk about finances, I said, I think as a, as a biblical financial stewardship, actually biblical financial stewardship is that we give, we invest, and then we save, and then we spend. And unfortunately, most of us, we, we start by spending. And then after spending, there's nothing. We don't even save, we don't even invest, we don't even give, we have, we have nothing. And it shows bad financial stewardship. Uh, and, and the challenge is, you know, when you have debt, you are spending before you earn. That's what debt is. And it, enable, it, 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 it stops us from being able to give, to invest, or to save. What that means, the Bible says, you shall not be borrowers, you shall be lenders. lenders. You can't be a lender if you are a spender before you earn. So it means, it, it doesn't say you will lend, it means you are a lender. It's not just what you do, it's who you are. Yeah. Now, because we are living from paycheck to paycheck, we can't even become who we are. So we need to learn how to manage money well. How do we earn? And then after earning, we give, we invest, we save, and then, and then you spend. You know, people who have this thing, I... Get a record t shirt at 6,000. You live once. That, that once is a long time. It's not just one day. Yes, you live once, but you don't live one day. You will, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yes, yes, yes. Um, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention. So in Second Corinthians, he talks about you have to decide, like, let everybody give what he has purposed in his heart to give. And when you get your salary, do a budget. I, I don't know if budgeting is in your nature. I'm a square. My personality, I'm a square, so I plan. Um, budget. First thing, as Muruti said, budget how much are you going to give? If you're able to spend your money on paper, you won't have surprises at the end of the month. So literally, I earn 20K. This month, I'm going to give 10% 10, 10 of 20K, 2,000. Every Sunday, I'm going to give 50 Rand, 2,200. That's my budget for church. That's it. If anything comes up, maybe there's a surprise, surprise we are doing. We're going to Mauritius as a church. Amen. We receive. <laughs> we receive. <laughs> if, if that comes up, then you're able to see, I can't afford it because I've already written my budget. There's no space for any unplanned expenses. Or, okay, I can take out from my entertainment budget and save towards whatever the plan is. So where I'm going at it is, as the Bible says, we should purpose in our heart to give. Let's actually purpose before you come to church because then if you haven't planned, you can't give. Awesome. Thank you so much, Matilda, for that. And I think maybe the final question to you, Awesome Pumi, so you have teens in your house. All your, all your kids are teens, man. All of them are teens. Wow. It's like all the best. Oh, so, so, uh, so one is 11. One is 16 and then 22. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, all right. And all of them are here, right? All of them, you come to church together. Uh, and I want to know, what is the, what for you, what is the importance of coming to church as a family? All of you being involved and coming together, what, how has it impacted your, your family? 
there is nothing <laughs> as amazing and yeah. that is mm. because the world out there is not merciful to our children yeah. it has got no mercy whatsoever so um having children in the church um it's actually grace that god has given us and you see it because first of all god has given us a mandate as parents that we should steward our children to him it is a mandate however the devil we also got the mandate to kill and destroy our children yeah. and we see it out there so it is it, and it's an ongoing struggle it's an ongoing fight as parents that we actually put on gloves each and every single day to say that you're not going to touch my kids because they are covered by the blood and the when children come to church you it then becomes a family a family fight yeah? it's no longer just the parents only children start to understand that as children's church is so important because it starts it's very challenging and difficult to start when children our nowadays children they they growing so fast intellectually physically emotionally so the sooner they start the better because then they get to understand who they are where do they belong because as much as we are training and teaching the world is out there to train and teach and now our children are finding the, themselves in the space where they have to choose where they belong and the world is enticing we are here to instill and develop character while the world is say it's all easy so how the church is, is is helping us a lot is that our children get grounded and they get to understand their own identity and they do not have to be fooled by science because out there science is, is what we're selling nowadays i mean just a two three years ago we were being told we from apes and kids were being sold that yeah. and children come from school and they tell you these things and you just, you have to rebuke it and say what does your bible say where do you come from yeah. why how can we forget our history because I, every day every single moment it is crazy out there and when it comes to children because that's the next generation and the devil wants to kill them whilst they are young and destroy their mentality so having to bring them to church it's it's actually affirms the beliefs that we are trying to instill at home because remember children see us as parents as always in a defense mechanism we are all yes they see you as a person that just wants them to do things your way because these kids are so vocal and they are so strong <laughs> i'm telling you you can find it my house it can be a battlefield but now they tell you that how come my teacher said one two three or my friend says one two three but now when the, the children are coming from a church setting they themselves can already discern certain things you see and you get that into their language and when they start and then they will tell you this is what we discussed but this is what i think then you are able to say okay this is where my child is at you know and also it allows the space to to actually even our own christianity our own belief in god is being challenged because when they come back from the children's church they come in to ask questions so we need to know our story and straight and how we conduct ourselves it's good. so it's important that as a family you are a tight unit you believe in one thing and the the ground rules are set and they've got a place where they can affirm the things that you're saying and they start reading the word by themselves they learn to pray for themselves because um out there we are they're meeting children from different walks of life and what we do today is what's going to shape tomorrow even the bible says that we need to invest today we need to train them today yeah. because tomorrow they might walk but they will never forget where they come from they will never forget what has been planted in them we can never control what they're going to do but today we've got the opportunity to invest as much as possible that they must understand they are the kingdom children they are heirs 
of Christ. So that is how it has shaped our family. It has assisted us. And it, it's, it's a continuous prayer. So parents out there, you really need, there is one thing that the devil is after. It's our children. Yeah. He doesn't even care much about us anymore. <laughs> yeah. Our journey is, 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 is gone. But the, the, the new generation that is going to change the world, he wants to get us there. Yeah. And we, we shift our focus a bit. He's in there. Social media. I mean, these kids, they know things you don't know. Yeah. And don't fool yourself and say your kids are holy. They're not. Yeah. They're exposed to the world. Yeah. <laughs> that is the reality, guys. Yeah. What, what they say to you, coming to you, looking all innocent, they not. Yeah. They are not. And never think your child is, and even going to church settings like this, still, Bazalwan, we cannot leave it to the church to do what we're supposed to do. The church is there to support us. Not the other way around. We still need to be on our, on our knees. We need to lay our hands on our children. We need to make sure that they are covered day in, day out. Amen. All right. Guys, thank you so much. Let's give them a hand. You can just put it on the chair. You can just put it on the chair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, that's that's. That's perfect. All right. There you go. The man with the Zulu wife. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, so I, thought, I think we, we, thought, we thought it best that we, we, we have this conversation. I know there's someone who came. They were, they were hoping for, you know, the word. Uh, go and watch T.D. Jakes or something. Um, <laughs> I'll preach, I'll preach next week, I promise, I'll preach next week. Uh, and I gave you a bit of preaching before the, the sermon, right? Yeah, so, so it's, not, it's not bad. Uh, so, so yeah, man, I think some of the values that these guys are sharing, it's things that, are, that we believe in. We believe in, in being church. We believe in being family. We believe that everyone is called to belong. Uh, we believe that everyone is called to be a part of a local church. We believe that not only are you called to be a part of a local church, but you are called to serve in the local church. You are called to belong in the local church, be part of a small group. You are called to contribute in the local church. All of us are called to contribute, not only some, but all of us. You are not, you're not called to live by yourself while you are in a local church. In a local church, you need to find community and throw yourself in it. And talking about contributing, we believe in giving, and we have different ways of giving. Uh, this morning, we are about to give. Uh, so if you would like to give, uh, we have baskets that are going to move around. I'm going to pray right now, and then we have uh, baskets that are going to move around. But uh, apart from that, we also have uh, PayPal. If you are a PayPal person, uh, there's a QR code there on the, on the, on the, no, PayFast, I mean, sorry. PayFast, if you are a PayFast person, there's a QR code there. And then the EFT, um, um, what is this, details are there, so you are welcome to, to also give. Unfortunately, our Yoko machine is not working this morning, uh, but, but otherwise you are welcome to, 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 to give. Let us pray. Father, thank you that we have an opportunity to give into your house, your church. We have an opportunity to contribute to what you are doing in, in this house. It is a privilege and an honor, Heavenly Father. We recognize firstly that what we have comes from you. The resources we have, they belong to you. We are so grateful, Heavenly Father, that you have trusted us with these monies. We're grateful, Heavenly Father, that you have trusted us with these resources. And this morning, as we give, we're just saying thank you. We give as a form of gratitude to you. Thank you for trusting us with these resources. By giving, we're saying to you, we are trustworthy. You can trust us with more. I want to pray for each and every family and household that is about to give. May you bless them with bounty. Father God, you say if you're trusted, trustworthy with little, you will trust us with more. And I believe, Father, I trust that you will trust them with more. And I want to pray for everyone who's here who does not have money, who does not have resources, who does not have income. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will open opportunities and doors for them so that they can be able to earn, so that they can be a blessing to others and they will be blessed themselves. We thank you, we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Um...